All right, ladies and gentlemen, for those looking on the internet, um, this is the monthly Q&A. Pretty much, I'll try to hold it every second Sunday just to be like, you know, on a proper schedule since usually like I do it on the second or third, but I'll try to have it on the second. Uh, for those who have never seen this, pretty straightforward. Literally ask me anything and I will give you the answer if I can. And we'll go from there. It could be any any issues, whether mentally, strategy-wise, anything. Ask away. So uh, just to go into what Billy and I were talking about earlier, or just now before I started recording, um, Billy, you were talking about essentially, you know, like you'll have some good days and then one of your days will like wipe out all of your gains, right? Now, uh, I guess just a question to ask you in regards to that. Risk management wise, like how much percent of your account are you putting into a trade? So I usually do no more than about 10 to 20 percent. Gotcha. Now, something to note, uh, Patrice will probably, this is probably like the millionth time I've told him this, but, you know, I'm super, super picky on the setups that I take. So mm -hmm. let's just say I'm I like for me, I do 10 percent like maximum. Uh, per trade as well. Now, usually I'll like I'll calculate how much I may lose on the trade. If it's more than thirty percent, then I will more than likely just leave it alone. Like thirty percent is my maximum that I'm going to take as a loss on a trade. Sure. Now, let's just say you know, depending what contracts and what you may be trading, those contracts may be more expensive than others and stuff like that. Um. But, you know, we want to we also want to take like proper setups that won't wipe out the, uh, you know, like a week or two worth of gains. You know, let's just say for the Pepsi trade here. Right. We have um, where's my marker. So actually, no. Let's just say we get in on this uh, in double inside two down for short. And we get in somewhere, what, 159.15? Mm -hmm. And then our stop loss, let's just say that we use the inside bar or this one bar as our stop as opposed to whatever the trigger candle is. So roughly, that's like four, four deltas away. For those who are not, or you're not familiar with the term like delta, that's just like how I use it in the sense of like, if I go to... Uh, let, yeah, let's say Pepsi. Let's say I'm swinging this. I'll do like 30 days out at least. And I'm looking for puts. Maybe I'll do like a 155 put and a delta, you know, being $28. So for me, I'm, I'm like, all right, if it's four deltas away or, you know, $4 away from where I'll stop out at, um, I would want to, you know, make that make sense with whatever position I'm getting in. Now, of course, with this one, just do some quick math. Let's say the mid price is 1.80 and each dollar against me would be, um, what, 28 bucks more or less. Let me do some quick math. Times four, that's 128. So if I were to use that as my stop loss for like, let's say like 163-ish, 45, based on this contract, if I were to choose it, that would be well more than 50 percent probably like a 50 to 60 percent loss on the contract so if i would get let's just say let's say i use i would get like four or five contracts of these of this specific one at 180 if you did want to take that trade and it's a little more than what you may be used to like you know the loss portion you can always just reduce your position size or um, you know, just leave the trade alone if you want to. Yeah. Just because, you know, if I'm getting in this trade with full size and my stop loss is about 110 or 1 1.10 cents on the contract, I'm going to be losing upwards of like $440 for the whole position if I were to go full size. If you want to be a little more relaxed, you know, you could do maybe two contracts at the maximum. Right just so the 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 loss isn't as great as it would be 
Now, of course, with swing trading, your targets are going to be wider and same thing with your stop losses. So you can always adjust your like your position size just accordingly, just to uh, make it make a little more sense for what you're doing. And based on, hmm, hold on, I got to go back here. It's ATR is 3.04. And if you're swinging that to the downside on the weekly, 159. Yeah, so more than likely, even based on the weekly, even though we have been consolidating, based on the daily ATR, this will probably hit in one day, like to complete the H down here. And even to hit the first target uh, uh, from not this last week, but the week out before. So maybe that'll hit in a day or so for you, if you would take that yeah. down. But all that to say, you know, it's good to analyze your trades before you get into it. Right. Just so, you know, we're not risking all the money that we made in prior trades in this one. Aaron, welcome. Making sense, Billy? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, always good to analyze. So you can always just reduce your size and go from there. And also... Um, I asked this guy, he's a trader, on mindset. I'm going to have one ear in because I asked him a question. Okay, we'll give you another. Thanks for letting us know. So... What? Uh, the mirror? Bro, you... Karen, I'm going to meet you for a, for a few. Let me just let them know in the chat, too. All right. So, um, you know, just reduce your size if the stop loss would be too great. And also, Patrice probably hears me say this all the time, but, you know, whatever's making you money, I would usually implore people to just stick with it. Like, don't, um, well, it, this is a little contradictory what I'm going to say, but it's like, don't, ex like, you can experiment, but once you find something that works, you know, don't, um, or do your best not to, like, experiment too much. Because, like, you know, I see some people going from, like, Pepsi or for the sake of the conversation, you know, Pepsi, Meta, NVIDIA, and like every other day, just switching up what they're trading. Mm. Now, if you do find that that works for you, you know, keep on doing it. Don't let me dissuade you. Just for me personally, I find sticking to one thing and like mastering it um, and going from there works a lot better in what I've seen in personal experiences and with other people as well. Of course, there yeah. are others who are like great, can, can trade a thousand things. Shout out to them. I'm not one of them. So, you know. Yeah. No, you you're right. You're right. I was um <clears throat> like I literally I say let's say my account was at I want to say 250 and I did I just strictly traded IWM for a month and it's like got it to 500. And then I was like, okay, I'm at 500. Let me try other stocks. Um that's why I said, I, that's why I look at your, my RWM and then look at yours and see how close I am to it. And I was like, man, that's, you know, and that's when it was like, haha, back down to 200. I'm like, damn, what the hell did I do? We'll go over, we'll go over my watch list too on how I do it. Are we going to say, Patrice? I was going to say, I, I was starting off by bouncing from different stocks, but now it's, it's gotten to the point now where I just stick with just two. Okay. Been working good for you? Yes, definitely. Uh, switching your charts, going back and forth, and trying to remember what you, uh, what you were analyzing is kind of it's kind of difficult. So mm -hmm. staying with that that one chart or staying with that one stock, <clears throat> that helps out significantly for me. I was having the same issue where I, anything that I would that I would make on the next play, I would lose it, and it just it just kept happening. Um, and that was me switching. I, I remember I remember when we first started, I think it was IWM. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Microsoft and then it was Pepsi. And then went back to Microsoft. And then I, I stayed on SPY. 
I stayed on Spy, and then I would jump in on Tesla only on Fridays if I see the setup. But yeah. other than that, I'm sticking with Spy 100% of the time. See, that's, yeah, that's me. With um, On Fridays, I only touch either Tesla or NVIDIA. That's it. Only on Fridays. Yeah, those contracts can be pretty pricey otherwise. Yeah, right. those are pricey. And if it goes against you, <laughs> it's going to hurt. Yes, absolutely. Oh, trust me, I know. No, great to hear. Um, cool. Uh, Billy, I'll come back to you. I want to give okay. Adam a chance uh, uh, to, to ask some stuff. Aaron, if you can hear me, go ahead. Uh, I have your question here too, but if you want anything else that you want me to answer or go over. Desi, what's good, bro? How you been, man? I'm doing great. And yourself? Good, good, good. Just, um, it's kind of hard to ask because it's kind of like, I know the answer to it. It's just sometimes, like, you can have the answer to something, but just like the emotional aspect, it's kind of hard. So one of the things that, um, that I experience on a constant basis is I'll get in a trade and then um it'll retrace. It'll kind of like it won't approach my stop loss. It's just more so okay, I'm I'm red and I just really can't take my eyes off the PL and then um it, it won't hit my stop loss and it'll go up past my original entry. Like you know what just let me just cut not cut my losses but you know I was lucky my stop loss didn't get hit. Let me just take my gains and then like within five to thirty minutes bro like targets would be smashed so i just kind of need like advice on how to just really just if only getting out of trades when targets are hit or stops are hit so uh the biggest thing like to that of course um there's different methods that you can take like there's physical things that you can do there's like you know i always preach so you know i always preach this but uh, breathing practices, super, super important to just reground yourself and bring you back and like try to snap yourself out of that emotional state. But also even noticing like what you do, like even what you just mentioned, you mentioned that if it's, um, let's say if it goes against you, start like basically it going, it going against you. That's like your first trigger when the emotional ride starts. Then you start looking at your P&L and you can't look away from it. And then as soon as it goes green or a little bit green, you take some off or even the whole thing off and then boom, goes to all your targets. Now, uh, there's several things that you can do. Box breathing, definitely do that in the moment and close your eyes while you're doing it. So you shut off, like, you know, you physically stop looking at whatever's triggering you. That's one thing you can do. Second thing you can do, once you start feeling that you start getting emotional, literally just set your alert at your stop loss or your take profit and just walk away from your screen. Because no matter how much you look at it, it's not going to go, it's not, it's not going to make it go faster to your direction, no matter what you want. Um, you know, and it's also remembering like with the market, it's all probability, you know, whether it goes to your stop loss or it goes to your target, it, that that's out of your control. The only control that you have is just getting in or out of the trade. And anything from there is up to the market. So if you get into a trade and you're babysitting it and like getting scared, that's you like, obviously, of course, you know, like messing up your own trade, but you know, like you have to ultimately just let the trade do its thing and like not mess with it so much. Now, of course, if you're up like 50, 70, 80%, like definitely you could take some off, like don't let that go to zero or negative, but um. If it hasn't even hit your first target, let just let it do its thing. And like I said, you know, walk away if you have to. And also uh, keep a journal or like even some notes on your desk of like physically what starts to happen to you before you get emotional. Because there's usually always like physical tells before we start to get emotional mentally. So for example, for myself, um, I start to like, get tunnel vision and just start like looking at the chart and stop blinking i'll start like gripping my mouse really really tight once i notice that i already know i'm i'm getting to like the point where i'm gonna get super emotional so i would get up you know get some air outside just clear my head and then i'll just come back um and ultimately like i mentioned once we're in a trade there's nothing that we can do 
it's either going to hit our stop loss or it's going to hit our targets. And that's it. We just have to wait. Can I give him my, can I give some advice on that? Absolutely. Um, depending on, I don't know every platform that you trade. I think we has it where you can set your stop and then your target. Uh, when I'm trading on TOS, like you said, it usually go red. I've been in the trade where it unramp red. And then it goes green, and then it just smash your targets. Um, usually, what I do in that case, if it's red, and it don't hit my stop, but if it goes green just at five or ten bucks, I move my stop up to like what five bucks. Even so, if I lose, if it retrace or go back the other way, I'm still getting out of there with something. Instead of, and then I just let it be and just go. And if it's up. Like you say, 30%, 40%. Once it hit 30%, I move it up to 30%. And then if it goes to 40 or 50%, I keep moving it up every 10%. Let it go so I can't, so I won't lose it. So I can try to get as much as I can. Mm -hmm. That's what well, I Thank do. you, bro. Uh, you uh, know what? That that makes all the sense in the world. I'm going to um, I'm gonna start, I'm going to add that to my trading repertoire for sure, for sure. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. You're welcome. I thought TOS was going to be like, dude, you can't keep doing that, but they never messaged me, stopped me from doing it. Because, like, if I'm in a trade and it's 50 bucks and then my stop is 40 bucks and it's at 42 but never hit that 40 and then that 50 goes to 55, 60, I'm moving it to 58 from 60 and then 170 hit, I move it to, like, 65. Just keep doing that. That's what I did. Or you can set the trailing stop of whatever percentage you want out, but I'd rather set the a dollar amount that was just that's just my preference yeah you can definitely do that too like bracket orders so let's mm -hmm. say you know if i'm gonna get in a trade and i already know that that the stop loss is let's say like 0.20 and the take profit is like 0 0.30 0 0.50 more or less you know so with options it, it fluctuates depending on what's going on but um you could always have bracket orders so it has like your stop loss and your take profits already set in the system. So it'll do everything by itself. You can always do that. Um, similar to what Billy mentioned, as soon as it hits my first take profit, I'm moving the rest of my contracts to slightly above break even. So if it does come against me, I lose with some, I, I, well, I don't lose, but you know, I get out with something on the remaining contracts. And if it goes to target two, then I move my stop to target one. And then I'll just keep on moving it up until I get stopped out for my runners and keep it there. Yeah. I, what I do is, um, let's just say if I end up buying two contracts, <clears throat> once it hits 40%, I'm out of the trade with one contract, but I'm letting that second contract ride. Mm -hmm. Yep. You always want to let your, your winners run and get as much as you can out of it. Okay. okay. So you got... Go ahead. So... No, nah, because, you know, I never thought of it like that. So w what you guys do is when you hit a target, that target that was smashed now becomes a stop. In the sense of like, if I'm at target two, then target one is now like I move my stop loss there. So like if let's say okay. I just get into a trade, all I have is my, my, my stop loss. And then, of course, waiting for my first target to hit. Once I hit the first target, I'm moving my stop to break even or slightly above. And then once I hit target two, I'm moving that stop to uh, target one. If I hit target three, moving my the rest of my contracts to, to target two as my stop loss. And then I'll just keep on upping it until I get stopped out for my runners. Nice, nice. Yeah, that way yeah. You, can, you can take profit as you as you as it goes in your favor. And then from there, you can also, you know, whatever's remaining for, for your runners, they can keep on going higher and higher and mm -hmm. get more profit out of that. That'd be my problem is holding two target two. Once target one hits, I'll be like, I'm out. <laughs> I I then that's my problem is like holding those runners longer. Like the guy said, sell one. I just be like, you know what? Let me just get out. That's my problem too, is not holding long enough. So now I think if you do have a smaller account, of course it can be a little more challenging you know, where you may not be able to get more contracts and stuff like that. Um, if you have a, a, an account size, like let's say 300 to 500, something like that, usually I would, I would price, I would like at least 500. It'll give you a little more wiggle room. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, sticking with the indices like SPY, QQQ, IWM are usually best. Per, oh, by the way, I don't trade zero DTEs, even though they are cheaper. I, I always do one or two. I never go to zero. Even for like individual stock, I, I don't really trade zeros. Um, maybe Tesla, I'll do like a, a one or a zero, but the, the setup has to be like perfect. Otherwise, I'm doing like weeklies or anything more than like zero for anything, honestly. But going back to what I was saying, with smaller accounts, you know, sticking with the indices because they're they're very, very liquid and the spreads are pretty tight. And also the the contracts aren't that expensive. Like even IWM, um, let's just say, well, it might be a little off since it might be a little off because of the new contract. Well, it's one DTE. Well, so I know with IWM, Monday is the only zero, zero day. So I don't usually trade Monday's uh, zero DTE. I usually grab Tuesday on Monday. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So if I were trading tomorrow, IWM, I wouldn't trade this one because this will be the zero. I'll go okay. to uh, this one, the, the one that expires in two days. Right. Now, with that account size, I think the biggest thing is just like, if you only have one contract, like what I would do is probably just keep on taking it off at like the first or second target, whatever that may be, and just keep on growing it from there until you have enough to purchase a second contract. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going for, so this is what, 16644. And I have like a $500 account. I'll probably get either one contract of the 165, maybe two. I, I probably wouldn't go more than like two contracts on a $500 account with IWM because that will be like 240. That's almost like half the account. And if you take a, take a 10 or 20% loss, that'll be like 10, 15% of the account lost, which will, which will give you maybe like eight to 10 trades for the account, <laughs> which you don't really want. Um, but with $500 account, I'll probably do like one contract, no more than like 110, 120, probably the maximum. Of course, you can get the out the money and they're a little cheaper. But realistically, I would want to absorb as much delta as I can. Because, you know, for a dollar move on this contract, you're getting 35 bucks, even though this one here is cheaper, it's only 22 bucks. Um. But usually I like to I like to stay pretty close to the money. I don't like to go too far out. Like the ATR for IWM is almost three dollars. Yeah, like three bucks. So I probably wouldn't go a dollar and a half away from whatever the ATR is and just keep it there. Even with any stock, honestly, I don't go any more than like a, a, a like half its ATR. If I can only get one contract, it is what it is. UQQ is almost six bucks. Yeah, like six dollars. Spy, same thing. And I think even for spy and QQQ, yeah, the let's say two DTEs. Yeah, they're a little more expensive for spy and stuff. That's why I usually recommend like IWM for smaller accounts. The contracts are definitely cheaper and then you can grow it and go from there. Cool. Um, also, um, Billy, same thing, you know, that I mentioned to Aaron is like staying in trades longer, just set your alerts and just go from there. Cause like micromanaging the trade, like every three, four five bucks, um, you not to say that you're focused too much on the money, but it's good to let your trades pan out properly. Other than that, uh, anything else? Any other questions y'all got? No questions, bro. That was, uh, I appreciate the knowledge from everybody. That really does help. Um, my biggest thing it's just really just the mental aspect. It's just more so of 
I got to learn to stop worrying about what everybody else doing and just, you know, to the point you made, you know, chart it up, stick with the trade, you know, let it pan out. It's either going to hit a stop or a target. And then you just go from it there. One thing that I do do that I'm going to stop doing is I'm I'm going to just take the trade and just lock my screen, bro, because that's really, that's really, I, I win trades, but I, I hold myself back from so much, not, not to make it about money, but it's just, like I said before, man, it's just micromanaging. Like if you take the trade, don't look at the trade until, you know, of course, look at the charts in preparation. But once you're in a trade, set, I won't say set your alerts, but alerts should already be set. Um, alert set, take the trade, get off the screen. Once you get that alert and then you just proceed otherwise. I never really looked at it like that, but you all absolutely right. Thank you so much. Of course. And one thing to note that you mentioned, um, I think I went like, like on a mini rant the other day about it. But it's like, you know, this is your journey ultimately. Like. I had a student hit me up the other day where like the the biggest thing um, that helped them during our time is like really shutting everything off. Cause like everybody that I tell Patrice knows this too. You know, when you're trading, it's just you, there are no groups, there are no chats, there are nothing. It's just you and the charts and that's it. Um, you know, try to quiet your trading space as much as you can. Cause if you're in a trade, you know, you might be looking at the Discord and people are like, oh, I just made two, three hundred, four hundred percent. I made five hundred bucks. I made a thousand. I made two thousand. And that can even trigger some stuff in us. You know, we're human. It's, it's bound to happen. So it's like as quiet yourself as much as you can from the outside noise, because, you know, like I meant, you know, like I mentioned, we're human. You know, we have the tendency to compare ourselves and stuff like that. And, like, you know, want to be part of like the whatever club it may be but it but with trading it's really just like it's it's you and the charts ultimately like whatever everybody else is doing that's cool but you know in the long run it's not really beneficial um to your journey if you're like comparing like yourself like oh i want to make a thousand or i want to make two thousand too it's like you'll get there eventually it's just really being patient with it um because you know comparing yourself to other people if you're here making a hundred bucks, 50 bucks per trade, whatever it may be in relation to your account size, to me, that's great. You know, as long as you're consistently making money, to me, that's great. And of course, over time, you'll build the account to be bigger where you could be making one, two, three, four, five hundred 500 bucks per trade. It's really just being patient with that. How do you keep your chart so clean with the broadening formation? Because, like, mine's is terrible. Like, literally terrible. I, it's it's horrible. Uh, it's it's impossible to, to, to keep your charts clean with the broadening formations. Like, um, I have all of mine on TradingView. I have to spend some time and like transmit all of them back to thinkorswim. Um, but it's it's pretty and I would say it's impossible to do so because like, you know, my daily, weekly, monthly charts, they're gonna look crazy with everything. However, you know, when you go on the 15 minute, 30 minute, even the one hour, five minute time frames, it's a little more relaxed since you're a little more zoomed in. But like on the higher ones, it's a lot more. You know, they're going to be everywhere. Maybe I have my, I'll show you my Apple chart. And ultimately, like, uh, let's see. Yeah, like, like my Apple chart, craziness. But the biggest thing really is, you know, if I go on, let's say the one hour chart, or not even, let's say if I'm trading on the 15, it's a little more relaxed. You know, of course, you still have a bunch of lines everywhere, but it's a little cleaner. Cool, I got a reversal off that BF there. More than likely, we're going to head down and aim for this one. And also, keeping them organized. For me... I know there's people who like organize them with colors and stuff like that. 
I just keep it one color and then I just name whatever they are. So if you use trading view, I just have them in folders. Um, and think so I kind of started it where you can you can also name your broader informations. And from there, you know, just make it literally whatever works for you. If color coding them helps and knowing which one is which, you can always do that. For me personally, I just prefer them one color. It's just easier on my eyes. And then I'll just like highlight over it if I need to. But like, all right, cool. That's a monthly or that's a weekly or whatever it may be. Um, but that's how I do it. If that works for you, you know, definitely go for it. Um, also, in the sense of like how many to draw. For me, from the monthly to the yearly, I draw every single one that I can find. Um, from the weekly, if you want to like not have too many crazy lines everywhere, you could do maybe like a year or two back for the weekly, for the daily, maybe like at least two months back, even though personally I would do like two years, maybe three years for the daily and the weekly, maybe like five years. Um, but you can, you know, you can start a little slower with like two years on the weekly, a few months on the daily and go from there. You know, one of the things I've noticed about broad information is um, because I've tried the strat too. Uh, essentially, broad informations are like significant highs and lows on each time frame. So I, I still draw my broad information, but like in, in regards to making it cleaner, I, I would say like if you don't want to have so many on your line, just kind of keep like a mental note of those levels. Like the 373, like that 373, um, 373, 74 on QQQ, like just kind of just being experienced with broad informations that right there essentially kind of is a broad information just because it's a significant high and look how price reacted to it once it got to that level. Yeah, you could look at like a compound three as well. Like these yep. three candles, they pretty much took out all of these mm -hmm. levels here. Mm -hmm. Even right here on the daily. Mm -hmm. Let's cue. Should be this. You know, you got your, your little mini BF there. Boom, boom. Came back down. We bounced off this other daily one here. Came back up. And then died back down. But yeah, you could always look at it like that too. Just you can even just mark the specific levels and go from there. Literally, whatever helps with your system to make it as simple as possible. One thing that I've learned like the last three years of trading is really like uh, I've learned a lot, a ton of information. I think after people learn like a lot of things, it's like, all right, how can I condense this to work for me? How yeah. can I make this as simple as possible to work for me? Like, you know, this support and resistance, supply and demand, broader informations, you know, liquidity stuff, ICT stuff, all of that works from what I've seen. But it's really, you know, how can I make this work for me ultimately? All right. Like for me personally, I don't really, I don't really care too much for ICT. Like I use some things here and there, but for the most part, I kind of just ignore it. To me, it's just more noise. Um, and maybe I'm biased. Um, but like a lot of the things, well, let me be fair. The things that I know of ICT that I've seen, it's just things that have been around already. Just, you know, he has like different words or phrases for it. Um, to say the least from what I've noticed anyway, but again, you know, just, uh, my personal bias. Not knocking ICT at all. It definitely works. It's a great strategy. It's good to have in your arsenal. Um, I do use some of the concepts when I'm trading futures, since I don't use Strat for futures. Um, but, you know, just keep things simple. Ultimately, you know, what is something that you can look at every single week and it repeats over and over and over and over? And that's it. You don't have to do anything else. Once you find out whatever works for you and that it that, that it could be repeated, 
just keep on doing that. Like when I'm trading, um, when I'm trading the strat, I look for my reversal of broader informations. Or even if I'm trading the 30 minute, 15 minute, one hour, I look for my Momo hammers. I look for my actionable signals of broader informations and my inside bars. And that's it. It's all I look for. You know, everything else I don't really care for. Of course, it's still viable just, just to quiet the whole process and make it as simple as I can. When I'm trading futures, I just use fibs and look for my W uh, pattern trade. And that's it. Keep it simple. How do you find the courage to, you know, I get it that most of you day trade, but how do you find the courage to swing? Because I don't want to be waking up in the morning like, damn, let me check this before I get my day started. Because that's when I swing something, that's the first thing I do. I get up, grab that phone and see where it's at pre-market or, or just knowing that it's going to hit that target. So ultimately, you know, it's not necessarily like knowing that it's going to hit the target or the stop loss. It's just being okay with either, either direction. Mm. You know, like, let's just say, let's just, let's just pretend um, over here, this area here was, a, this is, this is the one hour, but let's pretend it was the weekly. If it's the, if let's say this, the, the weekly and I'm swinging this or even the daily, what do I know about the strat? I know that we would wait for actionable signals and actionable setups at broader informations. And then what do broader informations tell us? They're simply just telling us, you know, if price reaches this level and it reverses, more than likely price wants to head back down to the other broader information level. So we're just putting all that together and it's just, you know, on different time frames. But aside from that, also it's like, before you even get into the trade, it's being okay. All right. I'm okay with losing a hundred bucks on this trade. I'm okay. If it goes in my favor, I might make 200 bucks. Cool. And really being okay with that and going from there. Um, so once you get into this trade, I already know, well, I don't, not to say that I know hundred percent because nobody could ever say that. Um, but you know, based on what I've seen and my experiences, if we get a reversal off of broader information, more than likely we're going to head down here. Am I going to hold from here all the way down here without taking profit? Probably not. You know, I'm still going to take my profit as it hits targets down here. We have like kind of like a mini pivot machine gun here where this one candle took out all these candles um, in one go. But you know, in the sense of like checking it, I used to do that a lot. Like I'll get on the chart and then I'm like, or, you know, some people might not even be able to sleep because they're like, oh, let me see what's happening after hours or pre-market or whatever. Uh, it's just really just practice and just like don't do it and like not doing it. You know, you, I set my alerts. Of course, it's good to look at pre-market, you know, if it hits some, see if it hit your targets or not pre-market or even after hours. So now I have an idea. All right, cool. If, um, let's just say my target for QQQ was 370, and then the day opened down here, let's just say it opened all the way down here at 368. I already know as soon as market opens, I'm taking profit because it already hit, like it blew past my target already. So you can do that. Um, but otherwise, just it's really just practicing like not doing it. And then it just gets easier over time because, you know, it's like if you have the habit or with anything, you know, building that habit of you waking up, checking your phone, then you're just going to be in the habit of doing that every single day. Um, hopefully that made sense. I, I went off on a little tangent there. Not good. I did. Um, but yeah, you know, ultimately, uh, just do what you can to just set your alerts. Of course, check it pre-market to see if it's your target or if it's hitting your stop loss, whatever it may be. And then from there, you know, just leave it alone until the market opens because you can't do anything anyway. Um, and also just have like a strict routine for yourself. Um, like for me, when I wake up, I usually get up, you know, go for a little quick walk, get some sun, um, do some little like, 
uh, meditation practices, little exercise just to get myself up uh, awake and ready. Go make some quick breakfast. And then by the time the market opens, I'm good to go. And I look at my charts usually 15, 30 minutes before market opens. I don't really bother with anything before that because it's like if I'm trading options. I can't do anything until market opens anyway. And when I'm trading futures, I only trade it really during the New York session. So I personally, I don't really have any business looking at the chart until then. And hopefully all of that answered your question. Yes, sir. Really convoluted way. You did mention also, um, well, before I get into that, anybody have anything else that they want to ask or they want to chime in? Maybe things that didn't working for you? Uh, you answered all questions, bro. Appreciate you. Gotcha. My pleasure. So, um, Billy, you mentioned earlier watch list. Like you'll look at my watch list and then you'll compare. Mm -hmm. My watch list, super, super simple. You're going to go on the four hour chart. Make sure that you don't have extended hours on. Right. You're going to get the high and the low of the last printed candle. And those are your levels. Long above, short below. Done. That's all you got to do. Now, target wise, usually when I'm getting my targets, um, well, I usually use like a combination of like fib stuff. I usually use a combination of fib stuff with like strat targets as well to get targets of them from like, you know, charting out Tesla with those targets. Um, like if I were to do Tesla in this case, let's see the top of this candle is two fifteen seventy two. In that case, I'll probably just use like the previous candle highs and stuff as targets. So Strat wise, of course, if I'm going along with a four hour target one, you know, two right here. And if this one is too far away, you can always use like the body and then the wick. Okay. And also, you know, you can also check out its ATR as well. Like ATR of Tesla is 11 bucks. So first target is like $3 away, probably going to hit. Uh, the next one, that's what, 21 from 15-ish. It's like six bucks. That'll probably hit. And then from here, this is what, 15 to 230? Probably not going to hit this target all the way up here, but it may hit the body. That's like $11 away from the entry. Granted, this is assuming that day is just straight bullish. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. So, um, you know, watch list, pretty straightforward. And then, of course, uh, with the news and stuff, um, I check these two resources. I check Market Watch and just see what's going on. And also, uh, you also want to check Forex Factory because sometimes there'll be some things here that. Um, market watch doesn't have um, like usually uh, I think it's on Wednesday or Thursday like crude oil inventories and what else and natural gas storage uh, market watch doesn't have so I'll just go into Forex factory just to get that extra news because you know people are trading oil um, or oil futures whatever it may be that's good to know when that news comes out because that can you know, if you're trading oil futures on the regular mini contract, you know, that uh that move against you is gonna hurt. I'll tell you from experience. So so it's good to know to have like everything, you know, to have all your bases covered. And sometimes like they'll have some Fed speakers listed here. Sometimes they won't have it on Forex Factory that either one doesn't have. So just using both of them and going from there. And that's pretty much the watch list. Keep it simple. Don't make it over complicated. Now, of course, you could use different levels, the four hour daily, stuff like that. Um, in this case, some like sometimes 
If the four hour triggers, it'll still be an inside day, just something to keep in mind of or keep keep track of. Um, so if you're like me, I don't really like taking trades when the daily is trading inside. I would like be a little more cautious. So if I took the trade off to say the four hour off Tesla, I'll do like half my size. And then I'll look for a TTO to add the rest and go from there. Since the daily is going to be inside until it breaks this high over here or this low down there. So, you know, things to notice. One and thing I got into the habit of doing is um, I will plot a vertical line in TOS for all of the news that's coming up. Mm, that's smart. That kind of that, that kind of helps me uh see exactly what's going on or what's coming what's coming down the pipeline. That helps out significantly. Very smart. Yeah, I know. It, like sometimes you know if we don't write it down or we forget or we don't have it up, like we'll be like, oh, why did it do this or do that? That's super smart, Patrice. I will keep that in mind. It'll be similar to like like uh like these lines here, right? But instead of like, obviously this being the, the pre-market or, you know, the previous day and stuff, it will just be like for the news. Yeah. So it'd be like, if it's uh, something that's important, it'd be a red, it'll be a red line with uh note at the very top. If it's some not so important news, it'd be yellow. Hmm. That's very good. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Anything else y'all got? I might go like on a little tangent on futures and Forex before we end it. I think I'm good. I'm just going to sit here and soak up the rest of the information. I'm like, listen, I'm not touching Forex until I get this options down. That's just me. So Definitely understandable. Um, some... Uh, there's some things like, you know, one thing that I've noticed that people have like, they're like, oh, like futures are Forex. Forex, that's how I started trading, you know, quote unquote futures first. But it's really just like, you know, the, the futures equivalents on the Forex side. And then I went into futures and stuff like that. But what I've noticed is a lot of people would later, Aaron. Thanks for passing by. Appreciate your questions and keep me updated on your progress. Feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram or, you know, Discord or whatever works. So uh, for Forex and futures, what I've noticed is that a lot of people kind of just trade the derivatives of the futures anyway. For example, uh, let me just make uh, bring this up so we can view it visually. So futures wise, I see people, of course, you know, there's SPX. I mean, whoops, there's a, there's ES, there's NQ and there's YM, those like the major ones and there's CL, uh, gold, silver, and there's a bunch of other ones. RTY is uh, the Russell. Um, and then for Forex, the equivalents would be SPX 500, uh, now is 100 us 30 which people love and i get it it moves super quick high atr um cl what is cl in forex i always forget uh i will tell you right now i haven't traded forex stuff in a while was it energy oh yeah duh uh, U.S. oil, that's the equivalent for um, oil in Forex. Gold, I think it's XAU USD, if I recall correctly. And then silver is... Uh, silver is uh, ZAG USD. Anywho, without going too deep into that, I see people trading these three a lot in uh, Forex. Now, 
my bias over on futures over Forex is the spreads. So on Forex, you know, as we can see here, let's go back to TOS for a sec. Let's go to, let's go to ES. Oh, whoops. Let's go to ES. So the spread here, we see the bid is 58.25, the ask 58.50, pretty much the, the there is no spread. It's just ask and bid are right next to each other. And for futures, um, depending on what you're trading, they move in increments of 25 cents for ES and NQ. YM moves in increments of a dollar. Um, oil, I think it's like uh, every, like it moves in 0.10 increments. But anyway, for ES, for example, the spread here is pretty much, there is no spread. It's one to one. It's right next to each other. Now on Forex, for example, uh, the spread on SPX is about 50 cents, uh, give or take, and like 60 cents. So in Forex, what I never liked is if my stop loss, let's just say is, uh, let's go over here on the daily. Let's say my stop loss is 52.60. For futures, until it hits that price, I'm not going to get stopped out. But in Forex, if the mid price or the spread hits your stop loss, it'll stop you out which to me, I found annoying. So once I discovered that futures was just more efficient, it just made sense to just trade futures over the Forex equivalent. Um, again, you know, just my preference. It just makes more sense anyway. Um, and of course, you know, Forex does have prop firms, same things for future prop, uh, prop firms. Um, you know, it just makes it easier uh, to leverage more money for a lower amount of your own capital when you're trading. Um, so just throw that in there. What else? Um, anybody getting into Forex or futures? If I were them, I would personally start off with... Um, I will start off with ES or, or not. Well let, me, well, let me take that back. Don't start with ES. Start with, with MES. That's the micro um, version of ES. Or if you're going to trade SPX 500, uh, which is good too, because ES slash MES or SPX 500, it moves a little slower than like NASDAQ or YM. So if you're not used to the, the quick movements on NQ, or YM or the US 30 or NAS 100, you know, ES or SP 500, it moves a little slower. So it's a little more manageable. And then, you know, once you get used to that, you can either move to the other ones or really just stick to that, honestly. For me personally, in my experience, NAS or NQ moves like perfect for me. It's like in between like being fast and slow, like to me, the perfect medium. I already, like I already, Kind of, I'd like know how it moves, so I kind of just trade that only. It's very, very rare if I'll like go trade like ES or like YM or stuff like that. Um, but yeah, futures also in Forex, pretty straightforward. You're just buying or selling. Um, you don't have to worry about expiration dates or contracts per se. It's just buying or selling. If it doesn't hit your stop loss and it doesn't hit your take profit. It can be there for two days and you won't lose value just by holding the contract. Of course, if it goes against you, but if it doesn't hit your target or your take profit, it doesn't matter. You're good to stay in the trade. Cool. Hopefully all that made sense. Um, they have expiration dates as well or just? Nah. Well, technically, futures have expiration dates per se. Like the, they have contracts, but like monthly contracts. Okay. Um. So like right now we're on the Z contract. So if I go, let's say, uh, four slash ES, and let's say I go to Z, it'll be, um. So Z, I think, is for like September or December, until like February or March of next year. So technically there are like expiration contracts, but you know, I highly doubt you're going to hold the futures contract for three months and like not hit your take profit or stop loss. So 
you know, that's like the extent of like the contracts or expirations for futures, but they're very different. There's like no theta, there's no delta, none of that for futures. It's just you're just buying and you're selling. So for one ES contract, and I'll just write this down. One ES contract is uh, you make fifty dollars. Whoops, you make fifty dollars per point. So if I get in at four thousand and I, and I'm going long and I buy, and it goes to four thousand and one, I make fifty dollars per contract that I buy. You can think of it as like a fixed, um, as a fixed delta. So like let's say if you're trading SPX, and let's say the delta is 0.50. You can look at it like that. For every dollar that it goes for or against me, I make $50 or I lose $50. Except you don't have to worry about theta. If you know, if I get in, let's say if I get in now at, at four, uh, four, two, five, eight, uh, flat at 42.58, and my target is 4,300 or my stop is 4,200. As long as it doesn't, you know, like, if it takes five days for the target to hit, then it'll take five days. Like I'm not going to lose value just because I'm holding it from the day, one day to the next. So that's something that's nice about futures. I would never swing futures, putting that out there. Um, and most prop firms, you can't swing anyway. So unless you get like a specific, like if they allow you to, to swing trade with a specific uh, package you buy. But usually you can't swing futures in most prop firms. Um, and usually I won't, I wouldn't really do it myself anyway, because it's a little, you know, if there's news that happens in that hour when the markets close or whatever it may be, you know, it can gap up or gap down way past your stop loss. And you don't want to take that out, to say the least. Um, but yeah, you know, that's all I have. Any questions, last questions of anything? No, sir, not for me. Cool. And as always, Patrice, you know the deal. What was everyone's biggest takeaway from the call today? You ask an individual or just straight Patrice? Well, uh, more so because I've worked with Patrice before. So oh, okay. he, every time the session's done, I always ask him this question. But yeah, like, you know, you can go ahead too, but like, what was your biggest takeaway? Um, Just be patient. Stay what, you know, do what works for you. Like literally for, like I stated earlier, IWM was working for me to a T. And I mean, literally making 40, 50% daily. And it was just like, okay, I grew my account to where I needed it. And then I was like, okay, I have more capital. Let me switch to the bigger stocks. And it's like, no, now I'm wondering what happened. Dang, I was on a roll. So it's like, like you said, do what works for me, you know? And like you said, we're all human. Yes, I had to stay out of the options win channel for a while because I'm like, Dude posting, regular guy posting 1300 1500 every day. And I'm sitting there like, damn, I'm struggling to make $100, you know? And it's like, but I never questioned, like, how much capital he's using to get to that, you mm -hmm. know? So my, set, my biggest takeaway is nobody can trade for me and do what works for me. Correct. Yeah, and this is a, this is a marathon. Um, you know, you... I, I was doing the same thing, trust me. I was it was struggling just making forty five dollars here, forty sixty dollars there. Uh, I turn my music on in the morning. I set my my charts up, and I just I just take what I what I see. I take a chart. I take it bar by bar, literally. Mm -hmm. That's the way to do it. And once you find that, well, whatever works for you. Congratulations, you figured trading out. It's just doing the no. same thing over and over and over. Until now, I want to ask you to, the script that you're using for TOS, mm -hmm. is there a way you can send that to me or direct message me that? Because what I do is I have 
the regular strat on my TOS, not where it's showing the uh the monthly, weekly, daily, four hour. I don't have that. But so I jumped to I jumped from trading view to TOS. And it's like, dang, it's tedious to keep jumping back and forth. I didn't know it was a script for the like how you have the two hour, four hour, the daily, and the weekly at the top of your TOS right there. You mean I don't like have that on my you mean like the four charts? No, no, no. Like I I have the four charts. So oh, you, see you right mean here, my over here, the time continuity. Yes. Got you. Uh, yes. let me see. Uh, so I know if you go to like settings, it should be like a script that you use for that. It should be this one. Um, I think it's this one. Let's export. No, let's share this. All right. Um, are you on Discord? I mean, uh, yes. if, do you have your Discord open, Billy? Uh, I can open it. Yeah, you can like DM me like right now and I'll literally send it to you now. There we go. Yeah, that that's the script for uh the FTFC up here. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Cool. Well, appreciate y'all for coming through. Of course. Um the hold on, let me make sure. I think it should be up already for the for the next month uh pretty much moving forward i'll have this like every single month um you can always go to like my link tree and it has like the monthly q a link there and you could just like you know sign up for the next month um whenever you'd like okay so for those watching this just click on the link all the future months will be there all you got to do is sign up for and it's always going to be free just come by you can have a good little chat and learn together. Cool. All right. There's nothing more than I have. Anything uh, to add, Patrice, before we go? Uh, no, that's about it. Uh, great, great session. I definitely will be in the next one for sure. Sounds great. Um, I think it should be by the, sec yeah, the second week of November. Okay. I will try to be in that one as well. Yeah, I think I did the second week because Thanksgiving might be like near the third one and people usually don't come through when it's like family events, which I totally get. But anyway, enjoy the rest of your night, fellas. And whoever's watching this, you know, any questions at all, you feel free to hit me up whenever. Um, and of course, you know, as always, just re uh, reinforcing it. Stay in your lane. Follow what works. Stop doing what doesn't. Make sure to journal all your trades so you can see what's working and what's not working and really just adjust from there. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your week, everyone, and I will talk to you all later. Peace. Thank you. Bye-bye.